Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Rattlebones! Hey, why don't you, why don't you read the intro to Rattlebones? Welcome, girls and boys. <laughs> My name is Rattlebones, and you have been cordially invited to spend the day at my fabulous festival of dice. Whee! Play games, win prizes, ride the drain. I'll be wandering around the park. And if you're the first one to find me, you win. Won't that be delightful? And this is uh, Rattlebones here in the cover. Um, creepy. <laughs> Okay, unfortunately, the game has absolutely nothing to do with that. In no, sense. it doesn't. This is a game where you are, it's called a dice building game, where you are actually building dice physically. Yes. Uh, it's a family-style game where you're trying to get the most points, and that's about that. Let me show you how it plays. At the beginning of the game, you're going to take a deck of cards and shuffle them and place them on spots on the board. Some spots are printed on the board, other spots will be placed there. They're different buildings in the fair. Each player is going to get uh, three trained monkeys and place them here in the start space. They also get a, a, a I guess this is a mini trained monkey here. And then this is Mr. Rattlebones himself, that friendly chap of doom. Now, players are also going to get three dice. These are normal dice, except the one is replaced with a Mr. Rattlebones figure. On your turn, you pick one of your dice to roll. So let's say I pick the white die and roll it, and four. I pick one of my guys to move four. Well, at the beginning of the game, it doesn't really matter. One, two, three, four. So I land on this plus one. Now, if I decide to take that spot, I'm going to pick, take my die, and I'm going to pick any side on that. Let's say I pick the three side. I'll use this little pink tool that the game provides me with, and I'm going to pop this side off. You'll notice that that side comes right off. I'll then take the side that's indicated by that one and place it on the die. And now in the future, if I roll this die and I roll this symbol, I'm going to get a point, which is different than the other sides. So you can replace any side except Mr. Rattlebone's side. And you can see all the sides are empty that you can easily pop things in and out of. And as time goes by, you're going to have dice that look very different with different things on them. So what do the different sides do? Well, whenever you roll a stock market side on your die, you'll take one of the stock markets here that the game provides you with. There are uh, five of them in the game, and so players are trying to get these stock markets because when all the stocks have been taken, then whoever has the most gets 10 points, and whoever has the second most gets five points. When you get a gold coin, you simply take a gold coin from the bank, and later on on your turn, when you roll dice, you can pay a coin to roll two dice instead of one, or you can pay two coins to roll all three dice, doing an action with each one. When you roll a thief, you can steal coins, stocks, and stars from other players, one from each player. You get stars here, and if you land in a start space, you are able to turn stars in for points. One star for three points, two for seven, three for 11, four stars, 15 points. If you have a times two on your die, when you roll that symbol, if you are rolling another die, you will double it. So if I roll that and a gold coin, I'll get two gold coins. If you roll the re-roll side on a die, when that happens, you get to re-roll the die again, plus another one of your dice. This symbol here that shows nine dots lets you move one to nine spaces. This one here, when you roll that, you move the train in the middle of the board. First, you score points where the train's at. It's at zero right now, and then you move it one. So then it'll be worth a point, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and just goes around in a circle doing that. When you roll the one, two, three, four side of a die, you will score points equal to how many, whatever position. So if you're in first place, you'll get one point. If you're in last place, you get four points. When you put an arrow on a die, the arrow you can put on the die any way you want, 
and whatever the arrow is pointing at, it becomes the same thing. So this is the gambling die. This arrow is also a gambling die. It basically doubles one side of your die. Speaking of the gambling die, when you roll that, you get to roll the gambling die. It will either give you two, three, four, or five points, or it will make Mr. Rattlebones move. And then finally, I already mentioned this one here, gives you a point. However, if you land there again in the future, instead of adding another point to one of your sides, you can upgrade that point to two points, and then three points, and then four or five if you want to. So one side of the die could score you five points if you land on that spot enough times. So, Mr. Rattlebones, anytime you roll him, you have to move Mr. Rattlebones one space. He starts in space 65 and moves slowly around the board. Anytime you roll Mr. Rattlebones on the gambling die, he moves. If at any point he meets one of the figures who's moving around the board, the game will end, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. That's it. As you can see, you're limited by the number of sides that come with the game, but there's quite a bit, and in all the games I've played, I've never run out of sides ever. Well, the first thing I gotta give props to is just, it's, it's cool. It's really cool on how these dice go, get put together and built. I, I like that concept, and I wouldn't mind seeing that concept used in a lot of games. The dice are big and chunky, the things go in really easily, they come out... Not as easily. Pretty, you can, well, okay, they come out fairly easily. Getting them out easily without popping them halfway across the room is a little more uh, difficult. Yes, that's true. And it's possible that after a while you get tired of popping them out. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what the game felt like sometimes. Okay, I'm done. It's your turn. Hey, just a minute. Just a minute. No, I'm almost there. <laughs> you know, that's how it went. That being said, this game has gone over really well with everyone I play. Gamers may not be as enthused with it, but for family-style gaming, my kids love this. They love the idea of building their own dice, and it's really simple. You roll, you switch a side out, or you get points mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah. It's certainly not the most... Uh, I'm not sure that everything in the game is balanced. Like, gold coins, I'm still not sure what the point of those are. You spend a gold coin to get an extra die, but you spend a turn to get that gold coin, so... How does that matter? Stars and stocks, on the other hand, are things worth going for. The gambling dice, yeah. getting points. And there's lots of different ways to get points. If no one else is doing something, like let's say no one else is doing the train, then it's mm -hmm. worth doing. Yeah. If no one else is doing stars, that's not a bad thing to do. Right. Uh, this, if, if, if everyone's taking the stealing dude, the, the thief, then you might as well just go for straight points other ways, I think. Right. Um, I like the artwork, too. It's a creepy-looking carnival, but yeah, it... I would never take my kids to this one. <laughs> but they might win a prize <laughs> and ride the I train. Want them to win a prize here. Um, yeah, when I saw the dice, I was like, hey, that's cool. Um, and then about halfway through the game, I was like, okay, um, this actually isn't that cool. Um, it is a cool idea. Um, but as a mechanic of the game, I found it slowing the game down more than making the game fun. Uh, and that's just my personal opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Um, that and 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee somewhere. But it, it really, like I said earlier, we, we had turns where uh, everybody had done their turn. And the guy that three turns ago, he was still trying to fit his little thing in there or pop the other one out. And uh, it, it, just, it just bogged the game down more than I thought it should. Despite that... I feel like this is, I have already done my top 10 family games of the year and this was on the list. I feel like it's a strong candidate for that because it's really easy to teach people. They're really going to get into the changing their own dice and each concept is very simple. This one doubles another die. This one gives you a coin. You really, once you start playing the game, you don't have to explain anything anymore. And while gamers are going to look at it and go, well, there's not a whole lot of strategy because there really isn't. No. I mean, obviously, you can pick which, which one of your monkeys moves. After a point, you might have multiple place, things to move. But for the most part... But it's an absolute luck fest to see if you get to move your, you know, how far you get to move your monkeys. But I still think the game is fun. Now, it'll be interesting. The first time you roll rattle bones, you move them, you're like, wait a minute. I just moved this guy one space. Big whoopee. It's going to take forever to get him around the track. And all of a sudden, the guy gets roller skates or something. Because, like, mm, I don't know that I've ever seen anyone get more than halfway down the scoring track. Because that guy just starts yeah. running down. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. That is one mechanic of the game that I did like. How rattle bones went the opposite way around the score track to meet up with the players. And that's what was the, that was the game end. 
I, that was actually pretty cool because it was a it was almost like a variable turn, a variable game ending where you didn't really know when exactly it was going to end. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's it's what it's worth, but it is really really heavy on the luck um, as far as far as my my opinion is concerned. Um, I mean, it is nothing but rolling dice, and you have to. It's basically a roll and move game um, with with a few extra pretty kind of neat mechanics thrown into it, which is fine. It's okay. Just not one that I'm going to be asking to play very often. Well, this one gets two constructible dice up for me for families. I want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. For me, myself, I'll play this once in a while and get a good laugh, but I'd rather play it with my family. Yeah. That's the group I want to play it with. I think kids will enjoy it. It's easy to teach. I think the, the dice are cool looking. And we joked about the creepy theme, but kids don't even uh, notice that. It just no. looks like a fun thing. Yeah. It's a giant monkey... Wanting other monkeys to come to his carnival. Right. My one of my sons that played the game, David. David. David said that he didn't like the game at all. He it was kind of boring for him. Yeah, but he's edging up into the gamer yes, territory. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So not all kids. Uh, I, I guess maybe upper teens, uh, mid to upper teens, they might enjoy it. It just depends on their personality. Um, below that, I think they'll have a great time with it. They'll just they'll they'll get wrapped up in in you know making each of their little dice unique and 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 having fun with the game. And that's that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, I, I would kind of agree as far as family games are concerned. I, I'd probably give this uh, one and a half thumbs up. Not not the full two that Tom is doing. Um, as far as what I would like to do, um, maybe half a thumb. Uh, I, I just don't see myself. Uh, Asking for this game very One thing on here, it says age is 14 plus. That's crazy. Yeah. You can go as low as seven years old, at least. If a kid can roll a die and understand what a die does, you know, if he can understand the little... Maybe it's because there's a gambling icons. die? Maybe so. A stock? Maybe so. Which actually doesn't make any thematic sense. But... <laughs> Are you buying stock in? We're at the fair. We're buying stock. Buying Woo! stock in the creepy fair. <laughs> Anyhow, anyway, I certainly check it out though. Look it over. Yeah. This is gonna really be gangbusters with some people. A lot of fun. Try before you buy. Rattle bones. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.